Welcome to the Nordic Mythology Podcast. I'm Daniel Farrand, owner of the company Horns of Odin, and I'm joined, as always, by Dr. Matthias Nordvik. Hello, everybody. Yeah, joined by me and your new puppy. I can hear it in the background a little bit. <laughs> this time we are also joined by Kati Ran. Uh, <laughs> hello, welcome to the show. <laughs> Hi, so nice to return again to uh, yes. talk with you guys. It's wonderful to have you back. Mm-hmm. Hey, finally. Yeah, I've finally. been I've been pestering you for, for a while. You did. Yeah, we <laughs> we just met up this summer also. That was so mm-hmm. fun. And yeah, then was. we did again. So uh <laughs> we made yes. It. yes. So we we first met at Castlefest where we were helping our mutual friend Jonas yes. with his Nabala show. Exactly. And, it was a lot of fun to hang out with you. I think we got roped into doing the merch stall. Yes, we, we sold t-shirts, man. That's such an old school thing for me to do because I I used to sell band t-shirts for many groups on the Castle mm-hmm. Festival. So it was a total deja vu vintage feeling. But that's mm-hmm. what you do, right? I mean, with all these different groups and bands you become friends and you help each other out whether it's in music or all the other stuff you know Mm -hmm. or body painting uh joshua (laughs) yeah stuff like that Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the middle spot yeah then i got to meet uh, matthias finally yeah yes yes cool yeah (laughs) so is that was that the first time you two met as well yes yes yeah (sighs) It's so odd walking around and just meeting people that you, you, we've spoken to many times on here, obviously. We, I mean, we did two episodes originally, if you remember, Cam, we yes. accidentally lost one of them. <laughs> That's uh, right. so, so we, you know, we'd spoken a bunch and when you finally meet somebody in person, it's, it's like, oh, I, I know you, but I don't quite know you in person. It's, it's an odd experience. Yeah. But it felt really familiar for me. And maybe it's because I hear your voices of the two of you, like Mm. with the podcast, because I also listen to them. And I don't know, it's just maybe it's just there's something of the character that's always really deeply embedded in the voice. It's like your full character is in there in a way. Mm. Or, well, that's how I feel. So it does Mm. feel, yeah, that, well, you were like, how I thought you guys would be the same. <laughs> <as online. laughs> Good. Oh, I'm, I'm glad that we, we didn't come across as divas in person. <laughs> no. no, and I also hope I didn't. <laughs> you, no, you didn't. I have to say, you are one of the sweetest, kindest people I've I've ever met. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I think we, we spoke a little bit about it in person, and I, and I said to you how when we we messaged back and forth I wasn't sure how to to take you sometimes because I don't know if it's the the Dutch or maybe just messaging isn't maybe your thing and I wasn't always sure that when I met you I was like this is actually the kindest person I've ever met yeah. ever and you, and, and you mentioned before about you know helping other bands out and I don't know anybody and I think it probably goes I was going to wait to say this but I'll say it now anyway um, oh. I think I think it goes underappreciated and um, how much you do for everyone else and I told you this in person that you you do so much for everybody behind the scenes that people don't see you know like helping Josh the amount of times you messaged us up for this podcast and reached out to people that you have in your network um and the amount of times I saw you at Midgas but saying to people um oh I can put you in touch with so and so I could help you do this and and just you're always willing to help people and and push their careers further and I think it's a beautiful thing to see, and you deserve a lot of credit for it, in my opinion. Oh. <laughs> I very much agree. Very but, much agree. Uh, <laughs> very kind of you. Thank you. But uh, yeah, but for me, it's also uh, the way I want to live. And I feel that that is also community living. And I experience this as a community. And so, yeah, I don't know if it's an example or just part of my nature or actually the basis of this whole almost genre as well but I feel that it is a community and we should support that however and that's not me just talking pretty words I really feel that that should be the base premise you know and um, and sometimes that's a step forward sometimes that's a step backwards 
but whatever mm-hmm. it is, you should look for the good outcome. <laughs> for mm-hmm. everyone. Absolutely. So. But I, I think that's such a good quality to have because not enough people have that anymore, especially in probably in such a niche field mm-hmm. as this. So mm-hmm. many people are worried to help others because they feel like if they help them get further, then that somehow knocks their own progression and their own ability to to do well. And the fact that you're so easy to put that aside and go, okay, I want to help my friends go as far as they can. I, I think that's a quality that not many people have anymore. Mm. Um, so. Well, yeah, I, you know, of course we all experience some, some elbowing from time to time, but, but we shouldn't, or we should try to not <laughs> get so distracted by that. It's important to, whatever you do, do it from the heart. And also that can be, in different areas so mm. like many people know i release and make music but i also don't do it in an extreme amount uh, mm-hmm. but, but when i when i bring it out it's something i'm so fully behind and it's really a piece of my heart that you know that i put out there and you know that might not be the best business strategy one could say because we all you know the whole algorithm everything is based on massive output and Mm. everything like that but yeah it's for me it's it's about whatever you do whether that is helping a friendly uh, band or releasing something yourself you have to be behind it fully and you have to have something to say Mm. and if i don't have something to add or think that you know it it is something like a something really from the heart and, and maybe perhaps a new angle to a subject then then I don't really feel the need to release it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I suppose. I don't know. Maybe it is a character thing. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's it's yeah. true. I, I'm sure you felt it, Matthias. Like even mm-hmm. sometimes you just, you know, you, it's a tough one, especially with Instagram. It's like, you know, with the, like you said, the algorithm, you have to put new stuff out for mm-hmm. it to get seen. You have to like keep on top of it and release new stuff all the time to to keep up with the Joneses, as we say in, in England. I don't know if that's a saying in yeah. Denmark or in the Netherlands. We it's, know, you know here too. Keep, yeah. Yeah. Keep, you know, it's keeping up with the, the, the rich people, the people who are ahead of you or whatever. Um, and it's like, that. that's the thing you have to do. But I find myself, even through Horns World, and sometimes I'm like, okay, I, I should post, but I don't have anything to say. Yeah, and I've got I've got nothing, and, so, and then I'm like, I, I don't want to just pick a picture and post and be like, look at this pretty picture or whatever. Like, yeah. I feel like I should have something to say, but then on a business sense, it's like I have you're, to do it for the business. You're, yeah. you're you're a business, so you you can actually get away with like, look at this pretty picture. <laughs> I know, but yeah. I feel bad doing it because I, I again I want to have like purpose. I want to try and educate through it, like give some value, not just like. Yeah sell my soul i guess well that's the thing right it's always seeking that balance between um staying in touch with people even if it's through this little black mirror that we all have in our hands the whole day or if it's something where you create room for introspection uh, for yourself and also then when you do have something to post you're you're genuinely excited or you 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 genuinely want to share something that you found and are are yeah hoping that other people also resonate with Mm -hmm. and i i think um i just read something uh, about this authenticity factor online and how people actually crave for that because they see through they see through the posts that are made um to please comment on this one or like we've Mm. all you know the sneaky Mm. questions or the please engage here (laughs) people feel that so i i took a little bit of a step back uh the algorithm definitely lets me know because it's crashing but i think you know the people that follow my work anyhow are very patient and but also they appreciate that they're not being Mm. bombarded with uh, Mm. this loudness that is so um present in the world and i think this is also if you look at the topic that we are also into um and this old times and the, the values we can say from that if you would compare the noise of today just the noise of the earth to to the sound volume in general of hundreds of years ago it would be so different and i think we, we lack 
moments of, of space and silence. We need it to, to churn on things and then come up, come out with something. And in my latest song, uh, Hefering, this is actually one of those songs that was churned on so long because I needed these breaks, like, okay, what comes next? And I don't know, for me, that creates something that feels well thought out, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, every layer has a meaning for me and has come to me in a certain moment of reflection. And of course, that is not something that the listener might all pick up, but I know it's there and it gives, mm -hmm. gives some added value to it for me, at least, you know? Mm -hmm. so, Absolutely. Yeah. And I think we're, we're living in a, a time where everybody has to be doing something or listening to something all the time. Like mm -hmm. people can't be alone with their own thoughts anymore. I mean, yeah. I, I I challenge probably most people are listening to this to to put your phone down and then resist the urge to not pick it up in <laughs> ten, it, in Dan, ten minutes. Like we keep we keep like advertising against ourselves here. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah. that's it. no, they could they they could put it down and, and still be listening through Bluetooth. Maybe I don't know. But but like I I get it. I you know I put my phone down and then like five minutes later I'm like. I wonder if I've missed something really amazing that's just happened. <laughs> the queen die, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, well, yeah, that's an example. But, um, I Hardly. <laughs> but you do, you do do that. You like, you just get this, this like itching to pick your phone up and look at it again. Yeah. Like five minutes later, and then you're like, oh, nothing's happened. You put it down. And you're like, well, maybe this five minutes. <laughs> and you just, just yeah. like this cycle, and we all, we all do it. We all, we all do it, and I'm no, no different in that. But I'm, I'm trying to create at least space, and also on, on my pages. Then I suppose there is a little bit more space than, than a business advisor poss possibly would recommend. But it's okay. It's, it's, it's who I am. Why, why pretend to, mm -hmm. to be this massive company that creates three reels a day you know that's not no. that's not my page that's not what people come for either i so. think you were right people have a bullshit detector and they can see through mm. they can see honesty and genuine people they really do i think it's an innate thing we have because sometimes you do get a feeling about people and you're just like mm, there's just something not quite right about you and then two months down the line you figure out they're doing something and see this is the funny thing like uh uh this not so long ago i like my instagram account has like five thousand followers and and i'm just some weirdo who plays with bones in my backyard mostly most of the time when i'm not like at work or something else <laughs> <laughs> and you know posted a reel with a sausage <laughs> like, <laughs> and I, it's a delicious sausage but but like you yeah. know the the, yeah, like I, I think I think you're totally right. There's a lot of uh, people out there who can smell the bullshit nowadays, and it's mm -hmm. getting better and better. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna say that I'm not full of shit. I'm definitely full of shit, but uh, but it's a more authentic kind of shit than uh, than somebody who's trying to to sell you something. Yeah, not, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and even the fact that we're talking about it, because I've tried it all. I really did. I I tried to to you know be <laughs> at least seen when you release something i mean mm. because you all want a little bit of that return you know uh interest i mean i'm not gonna pretend i don't and i think every artist has this this struggle and this fight but at the same time it is good to sometimes pass and um mm -hmm. yeah just yeah turn off the bullshit i suppose it, uh... yeah Quickly, I have, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Qu quickly, I have to say, I only have 2,000 followers, Mateus. So everybody who's listening to this that only follows Mateus and doesn't take the time to follow me, I am most upset by that. And Are you gonna, <laughs> you gonna promise more coconut bikinis or? <laughs> I, the coconut bikinis are coming. We just, <laughs> we've just had a busy couple of months. <laughs> um, yeah. But they are coming. I, we, we're not welching on the bed. We, we will be doing the coconut bikinis. We, we I said we, we, we you, you agreed. There was three agreed. guys involved in that story. Yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I have not forgotten. <laughs> I think one of the guys involved in the story is 
significantly more interesting to everybody than me. <laughs> but if, Ali, if we can get Alex, I, I'd him, rather see him in a coconut bikini so, than you or myself, for that matter. So, so, so would I actually. <laughs> okay. I, I also have to apologize to anybody watching this because I seem to be becoming more and more undead. As the as it goes on, the so I have I I don't have my usual cameras. I'm using my laptop camera, which apparently only does grayscale. I just look like a zombie somehow. And as the light fades, I'm looking more and more gray. So I, uh, I have to apologize yes. that. But for anybody who doesn't know, you can watch us on YouTube, and it's a nice little segue plug into yeah. our YouTube channel that we're growing. Yeah, and also, by the way, as long as uh, nobody like breaks into your little mound and tries to fight you for a sword, I think you're gonna be fine. I I hope so. <laughs> if you do <laughs> turn grayer and grayer, like in undead, yeah. I'm just, I'm just, I, I don't know what's happening. Now. Yes. <laughs> the point oh. is, you you see the wall behind me. Yeah. That's green. But what? <laughs> That's a green wall. That's a green wall. No, it's not. It's white. Yeah. It's a green wall. I promise you, it's a green mm. wall. Mm. That is okay. Perplexing. I, yeah, no. So I, that's yeah. what I do. I don't know. It's just an <laughs> awful camera. So this is why I look as bad as I do. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> like it's loud graph. <laughs> that's it. Um, Katy, let's. Mm -hmm. What have you been up to since we last spoke? I know you worked on. You did you you did some stuff for Vikings Valhalla? I did. Yes, that was which has to be exciting. Yes, that was. Um, it, it's something that me and the composer Trevor Moore spoke about actually during the original Vikings series, but we couldn't find the moment to sort of start working with me. But mm -hmm. uh, that opened up when uh, the spin-off was sort of uh, filmed and solid, and also that Trevor knew that he was back on, of course because it's made by a different director and that doesn't mm -hmm. always mean you have the same uh, scoring team, but uh, for consistency also, and because he's amazing, um, they chose to so him again. And then he, he, he told me and I was like, wow, <laughs> this is amazing. Um, Be yeah. before, before we get into um, just like your experience, how does it, I've, I've always been curious how it works with the music for the Vikings. Cause you said Trevor Morris, is that, I, I know, I know other people have mentioned his name before. Is he the overall composer that gets people like you in yes. to do pieces? I'm yes. just, I'm just curious. And I'm sure other people are as well. And maybe oh, you yes. can give us a little insight. Yeah. You have the lead composer, right? This is the, the, the guy who, who really makes the whole score. He gets access to all the, the, the visuals and needs to write the, the moods underneath and also checks back with the director. And sometimes the director can, can it's really funny, sometimes they have their own language, but have, have some feedback, like make it more dramatic, make it more sad, and then they adjust that. So the lead composer is really the person who is mainly hired and also the end responsible person for the music. And of course, music is so important to to any film or TV, the, uh, the music really guides how you feel about the scene. Mm -hmm. And for Vikings for Halle, he was then back on and contacted me to consult him for special music instrument players. So, for example, we needed some more Chagel harp, and I myself it was not returning for Vikings for Halle, so I called uh, Shell Broughton uh, mm -hmm. for that. And also my own instrumentation was, uh, yeah, put in put in uh, cues. So of course not every cue, but in certain cues. And um, I was really uh, flattered that <laughs> my sound was picked out for the scenes for the Greenlanders because they are like the more rough uh, pagans or something. <laughs> and I thought, oh yeah, that's cool, you know, because it has a female protagonist also uh, in there. So yeah. I, it was really exciting and, and also, um, yeah, kind of lucky. But I worked with Trevor before on, on a Dutch Viking film called mm -hmm. Um So we already knew how we worked together, but now we could do it for this show. And of course, um, yeah, 
uh, just works remotely because he's based in LA. Um, but yeah, that was so good to do. And I also went into some old, uh, you know, texts, etc. But they weren't really needed to because they mm. preferred to me to stay on the strings. I did do some vocals. There's one scene I, I will spoil this. They put in some vocals of mine, and I didn't know they were going to be used <laughs> because I thought I made a draft. <laughs> like, oh, can you put in a children's choir that can do something like this? And then they took it. That's what happens sometimes. You're not always in control. Mm -hmm. uh, but no, it's it's been uh, so far a really cool experience. And I learn also a lot from that. And also, there is quite a demand at the moment uh, for the type of instruments that I play um, in new movies and in new TV shows. And this is so incredible. And even video games, mm -hmm. because I'm also doing a video game score at the moment. If you're mm -hmm. asking, you know, what have you been doing all the time? Um, that's been really great. So, of course, Vikings for Hala is still running, but then there's another party that wants to have these old strings and sounds for a video game. And, mm -hmm. and, um, now that the instrument is in demand, uh, they find me or some of my nickel harper playing colleagues and uh, and get the sounds in for, in for the mass audience. So it's mm -hmm. these are good times for for us. <laughs> yeah, good, mm -hmm. good. Um, and you did. I'm right in saying you did music for Assassin's Creed, right? No, I did um, the live for Assassin's oh, Creed. Yeah. I remember the I remember last time you he was talking about something. Yes. Uh, yeah. They flew they flew you out there, right? They they did. That was so cool. Um also at the very beginning of the development of that game, they still needed to get a grasp of okay, what is the Viking world? How does it look like? What are the sounds that could fit? So uh what we did was uh we did a live show for actually the company itself. Uh, on the Zeitgeist event, uh, we performed the music. And while we performed the music, we had this big video, like I think it was six screens all around us with this big review, you know, this really like, oh, bah, this is going to be the new team, the Vikings. <laughs> and it was really fun because everybody started to cheer. And of course, we, our music was synced to, to this review with the drums and everything. So that was such a great moment, but um, you know, uh, you win some, you lose some. I didn't end up in the Viking music score, um, but for what it's worth to say, I think they found the perfect people to do it and really mm -hmm. strong, strong musicians. So, mm -hmm. uh, but that also has been, you know, a learning curve. And uh, now I'm doing some instruments and vocals and whatnot for uh chris valesco who is mm -hmm. also well has a name in the viking music <laughs> video game scores mm -hmm. well you know you go from one thing to the next and that is that is also part of this music business you need to stay flexible you need to keep going and whatever and whoever you come in contact with you give what you have to give I think it's important to stay yourself, to sound like yourself, and um, and the, the right match will find you. Uh, mm. That's that's really a philosophy I had to learn also the hard way. But uh, after after the years now uh, that I've been doing this, that's really my conclusion. And I, I really hope also that people who have ambitions in this terrain stay close to themselves and keep going also. Don't give up after the first um, fall on your knee. Get up and uh, because new opportunities come. And this is something that also the last year uh, working with this uh, Chris has been so great. And uh, yeah, other, <laughs> other things that are coming out, uh, film, I'm uh, really sad I cannot mention the name of it or the title yet. Um, but really nice things have also come my way. And I've been quite busy with that. And then, mm. of course, the, the solo stuff. Yeah. Uh, one new single. 
And what is also an amazing uh, little news that I can share and may share for the podcast is that uh, I'm involved with another new life band that is, uh, yeah, going to be an amazingly new cool mm. project. Um, it's called e and I, and it sort of taps into um, also going down this road of music that is, you know, connected to what we call Viking music. But for me, it's broader than that. And um, sound and, and cultures worldwide, it's a universal language. And what this project is doing is it's connecting different cultural influences, different ethnical instruments and old sacred texts and puts that together. And for me, I really felt I needed to have something to also get out of this one type of sound that we see mm -hmm. here so much. Like I'm starting to get a hunger myself for like, okay, but what else is out there? What type of rhythm, mm -hmm. what type of influences do we see from other cultures? And how can we make bridges even through music? Because that has always been part of my personal mission is to connect people through music with each other. And that includes different cultures. So um, within the ENI project is brand new for me to, to help out there and contribute by recording. Um, I feel I have a spot to do that, just that. Mm -hmm. And that's also super nice. So yeah. sounds <laughs> busy, exciting. Busy times. Yeah. Busy, busy. Yeah. Um, okay. I have, a, I have a few questions, but mm. I, I, I didn't jump in because I had the, the puppy barking in the background. So I tried to keep my <laughs> microphone <laughs> quiet. Um, so I do apologize for anybody who can hear the, the puppy barking. He's a new addition to, to my life. Uh, he's a little rescue dog and he's still learn. He's still okay. learning. <laughs> so yeah, he's, he's a, a nine month old Cocker Spaniel and he's sadly had three homes before me. Mm. Um, I know. So he had uh, one home when he was six months and they got rid of him because they had a child. Um, mm. Even though they were pregnant for nine months, so they knew when they got him that they were going to have a kid, but they, they got rid of him. Then he went to a couple who wanted him to be a, a gun dog um, and they just threw him in a kennel outside for a week and he just didn't react well to it at all, which is probably where a lot of the, the bark he comes from now when he's, you know, he's on his own. Um, mm. Then it was with another family who got him, but then couldn't deal with the barking. Um, so they had him two months and they just gave him away. So he's come to live with me. He's where I'm loving it. He's, he's definitely helping me mentally at the minute. We're going for lots of walks and lots yeah. of cuddles, but he's, he just doesn't quite understand being on his own yet. And we're, we're trying to train his, him, trying to introduce him slowly, kind of just having that because they need to have their independence they need to be yeah. separate they need yeah you know they can't be with you all the time it's no it's no good for them but obviously it just it feels really mean having to leave them on his own and be like look i will be back especially mm -hmm. when he's been left a few times before but we'll get there and yeah i'll certainly yeah. be his last home there's no there's I, I couldn't give him back he's he's an amazing little dog yeah i think it's called it's the same with children there's a certain period where they don't understand that if you are out of the room, that you did not stop existing. It's mm. something like external locus of control. It means something outside of you is still there, even if you don't see it. And it's a phase and it's okay. Yeah. That's, it takes okay. time. Yeah. You will be it, so happy to see you again. And, and by seeing you again, train that you haven't stopped existing, you know? <laughs> That's it, exactly. The poor little guy. Frost. Poor little guy's had a, a tough, tough life so far. That I'm just trying to, just trying to help him out. Um, but we'll get there. Like I say, I'm not, I'm not one that'll give up on him. So when you mm -hmm. can hear the crying in the background, unfortunately, that's that's him. He 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 will settle down. Um, I'm okay. Not by it. No. <laughs> no. No. So so back to the um, back. To, oh, bless him. <laughs> uh, so, so back to the do you have to to write differently when it comes to games tv shows that kind of thing as to when you do it 
but your own music it's very different and that's why I, uh, it was also something i really had to learn and, and i'm still learning because when um these composers write a cue a cue is a short snippet of music for example one or two minutes long mm. they have of course to deal with all the layers that are still coming on top of what you are doing for example a full orchestra and that means they will think of some yeah melody for example they play it on a cello that is a uh, played on a midi keyboard and then okay they say okay please reproduce this on your nickel harpas do, do 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 and then sometimes of course we can just copy that blindly mm -hmm. but because it's a different instrument you will need to find your way in it and also to make it sound you know like how you play the instrument and for me, this has also been something I, I really needed to wrap my mind around. Um, and what I started to do is, um, okay, to copy these MIDI files, as they are called, these electronic lines that you have to follow with your instrument um, on the instruments in the tonality that they need to have. But I always add one or two takes where I do what I think is nicer or what is improvised or what I would it's not saying I know it better than them, but it's just like feeling like, okay, but how would I approach this little piece of music? And uh, and sometimes they take uh, that part and sometimes they stick to the MIDI. Also because they have to take care of uh, yeah the other performers and that all the notes sort of fit together and, uh, and don't uh, suddenly go out of each other and maybe not uh, work seamlessly. You, you so, do know. You do know better, though. Mm. <laughs> well, no, 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 <laughs> not all. <laughs> no, I imagine. But I just I want to add a personal touch to it. I mean, I am musically illiterate, or I don't really read now, so I have to look with the piano roll mm. and see. Okay, what have they made? Okay, so C, D, E, G, and then I, you know, reproduce that on on my instrument. And I'm I I don't care saying that either because it will help people who are also still having a lot to learn and to know that you can still do it so um but i i do feel if i then get a little piece of music for these games that it's always i always take the liberty to give them one or two files extra where i think okay yeah but wouldn't it be cool if we do that you know that's that, good yeah and then and also sometimes they take it and that is for me that's a total win if that happens mm -hmm. oh I bet. Yes. Hmm. yeah, yeah and what's thing. What's also been cool is that uh, uh, sometimes they need uh, voices for characters and I have a background doing the role playing, you know, the D&D. &D okay. I'm glad, I'm glad you went to D&D &D there. Then. Yeah, so I feel <laughs> totally, no, yeah, very quick, very quickly added to the convo. <laughs> quickly put that in there. <laughs> uh, but the role playing, yeah. And uh, that feels so close to home to me. So I can, I can, um, do some monster sounds, and I tell you, I had the best. Uh, Go on then. Record. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I need to hear <laughs> the Kati's monster sounds here. <laughs> oh, not... you, you put yourself <laughs> under it. Now. No, I'm not going to do that right now. <laughs> but yeah, and also, uh, of course, artist friends that uh, that you know were so sweet to to to. Uh, follow up on my call when I said, you know, okay, can we, can we go out? Can we have, have a nice cup of tea? Have a nice chat? And by the way, can you maybe record some wailing ghost sounds for this and that character? And they were like, oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, it, it's it's been a really really nice uh, form of also working with music. Mm -hmm. Not everything is a band on a stage on a little festival or a big festival, although that's. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna totally uh, do that again with this this ENI project. But to work in in music and to to give your your yeah your personal touch to some some scores and also to have fun with it again, this is very important. So it's been a good good last one and a half years for me being busy with this. Mm -hmm. I can't That's wait great. for it to come out. All yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, it's a it's definitely a good time. The last, like you say, the last year, two years. It's it's a good time to be busy with 
things like TV shows, games, when when you can't get out and do live shows because Absolutely. of, well, we all know because of COVID. See, I, I feel like I've forgotten about COVID now. Yeah, Even though, strange, huh? Yeah. We it's were awful. talking about it in the pub the other day and I was like, shit, yeah, that was like six months ago. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, I've, come, I've just was, completely erased it from my mind. There was a plague once. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then, now I'm just sneezing all over the place. Exactly. <laughs> it was uh, I had that realization on the on the Midcast plot, you know, like I I it just was like one of those first festivals for me where, where really everybody gets together again and also close friends, so you have a lot of hugging <laughs> and a mm. lot of there were a lot of people who got COVID. On the, yeah, exactly. <laughs> a lot of people got COVID also. That has to be said. But nobody seemed worried anymore. It really felt like a mm. past chapter. Mm. And of course, I don't know the safety uh, precautions that some people might have taken afterwards. Like, okay, maybe I'm not going to visit grandma this week mm. or something like that. But in general, it really felt like a past chapter and like, okay, we're ready to, to be together again and not mm. be yeah, held back. Yeah. In, yeah. No, I, absolutely. I, I remember seeing somebody post in the Mid Gas Plot Facebook group about mm-hmm. saying how they got COVID after. And I was like, is it a surprise though? Anybody who's been to any festival ever, when you're there for two, three days, you're maybe camping, you're around campfire with smoke, people are smoking, there's a lot mm-hmm. of drinking, there's a lot of staying up late. Like a lot of people just get sick. You catch the flu. I'm not downplaying COVID, but it's just no. like it's the prime place for for this to happen where whether it's if it wasn't COVID people were going to get sick from a cold or from the flu or something because it's just that kind of environment where these things just pass around so so easy it's no shock that that it was kind of picked up there by a lot of people Mm. yeah Mm -hmm. yeah it's yeah sometimes it's yeah that's that's true but uh, yeah it's a, it's a tough topic, uh, but it, I felt kind of relieved to be back uh, with people again, and I would prefer that um, to to anything else. So, <laughs> me too. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I got to give Mateus a hug. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. We, had a, we had a couple. We had a couple of hugs. It was nice. Yes, yeah. and I didn't bring anybody COVID because I already had it. I was you? immune for the duration of uh, Midgard Sport. Oh, good. Yeah. I don't know anybody who's had COVID as many times as you. Wait, what are you talking about? I had it twice. I it feels like you had it every fucking week. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, no, like you can't. I've had you. COVID. I've had COVID two times. Uh, I know people who've had it four times mm-hmm. but that's 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 america for you though like yeah. over here everybody gets covid all the time mm-hmm. so <laughs> yeah um no okay you mentioned before about like i think the, the community size and, and everybody knowing each other at these at these festivals and and that's that's one thing that was so surprising for me at make us but was seeing how close all the the bands were and all the acts like Everybody knows each other. And everybody's willing to just help each other out and and jump in and, and kind of do their thing. Guests here and there and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think um, I, when I saw Mika was playing, Chris from Highland was mm-hmm. sat on stage. She was like, she, she was missing a, an artist or a musician. So Chris from Highland was like, oh, yeah, I'll just come and jump on yeah. and play, play. I'm like... Yeah, he didn't know until uh, the day before that he was playing or something like that. that that's that's how it goes. <laughs> but that's but at the same time, how amazingly versatile and uh, just yeah, be together and make a beautiful show together. I mean, why not? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's such a beautiful. It is a community. You know, you have all these artists doing their own thing, but everyone just does seem to just get on and love each other and are willing to just help out where possible and and where needed. Oh, Dan, you're such a hippie at heart. You're like, I am. Oh, I just love the free-flowing free love. I do. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm sure that, I'm sure there's one or two assholes out there. I, I, I'm not going to ask you to name them. You're not a, 
We're all also way. secretly assholes, I'm sure. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Everybody's a secret asshole. Well, but that's, like... that's also being human. And, yes. Uh, but that's what I mean. Sometimes we just need to break open the conversation. And uh, yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> just say things. <laughs> but the, one, the ones we have had on the podcast so far, I think, from what I, from everyone I've met, it's been really, it's been really lovely. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think the, the only thing, yeah, the only thing that is really assholy is to to ignore people, the silent ignoring and stuff like that. People notice mm. that sort of stuff going on, but other than that, there's so much, so much hugging and love, and also contributing to each other's work. I mean, uh, I was there. I was actually blown away by uh, an acoustic set that was done by Voluspa. It's uh, Varg, who has also been on the podcast, and Soul. Mm-hmm. And uh, I told them, and uh, they were so <laughs> so happy to hear it. Sometimes mm-hmm. you really just need to say it also, because mm-hmm. we still need that, or artists still need that, uh, to hear you know, that you like something. And, uh, and now, that's, the, that's where I was going to. Uh, we we want to, like, I'll play some Nicola Harper for them uh, whenever they play live, uh, we see for next year, or yeah, oh, when the opportunity so. arises, but it just comes from these little little moments, these little sparks, and that's how also everybody knows each other. Mm. You keep meeting into, uh, you keep running into each other, and uh, yeah, yeah, so it's easy if you all get along. Yeah, be kind and and only be a silent asshole, I suppose. Bitch about them behind the back, is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> I mean that when we when we were on that merch stall. Ooh. Oh, what what happened there? What happened there? <laughs> no, I was joking. We weren't really bitching. We No, we <laughs> weren't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean uh, it's nice you mentioned Solenberg. They were the two of the sweetest people I've I've met. Yeah. I know we we went back to the hotel at two o'clock in the morning, and I stumbled across Matthias, sat with Varg having a, a I don't know what you were talking about, but you were both in depth, sat there over it, having a beer. And, yeah, we were having a good time. Yeah, mm. yeah, they they're both really lovely people, um, and they came across really well on the podcast, I think, as well. I. Mm. I, it, there's not yeah. many people I can wish wish better for than them too. They they are really really sweet humans. Yeah, and not only sweet, but it has to be that talented. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, sometimes yeah, that yeah that des- deserves to be said also by other artists. Well, mm-hmm. we are again like to the back to the beginning. <laughs> but, well, yeah, it it does mm-hmm. go back to that because, like you said, you you going up to them and taking that thirty seconds to be like. I really enjoyed that. I, I I really like what you're doing. I think you're, you're talented. Like that's there's 30 seconds out of your life, but to them that means that will mean the fucking world. Coming from from you, so you know somebody who's been around for so long, done so much. Like that will mean so much. And people don't do it, and whether it's because maybe they're embarrassed to to go and say something, or they just again going back to they don't want it because they worry that it's somehow going to negatively affect their career. I don't know, but but it just feels like we should do that more because just those little moments of 10 seconds, 30 it seconds here and day, yeah, you yeah. really can make somebody's day or make somebody push, just push somebody to that next level because it is that little, especially from your peers. We all know what it's like, Matthias, I'm sure you know if in the scholarly community. If there's somebody that you look up to or you kind of use their work, I know you're looking around like, motherfucker, I don't look up to anybody. I am no, 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 it's, it's hilarious. <laughs> what, what, I actually, what, I was, what I was thinking here is like, a, it's a bunch of like, 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 like nerds mm. with, with like, you know, uh, who are just like sitting in, in, in their, their isolated little ivory towers. And then they worry about each other, like as if they were musicians and big stars. <laughs> like it's mm-hmm. it's weird that way. I'm like, guys, guys, there's no basis for that. Like yeah. really, you just need to stop. It's like, oh, but this this person over here kind of like took the thing that I was going to research and then actually made it into a research project. It's like, who cares? Like who cares? <laughs> You're not gonna make the same research out of it anyway. So. Just like mm-hmm. do your thing, 
collaborate <laughs> stuff yeah. being weird like, <laughs> like criticizing someone's book yeah uh, well you know what <laughs> If, so, if people write shit, then you have to criticize. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, what, what is it boiling down to? It's it's like what is it? It's like really, we have to be kinder, like lift each other up, but at the same mm-hmm. time, be able to speak our truth, but in a way where it's reasonable, where it's uh, asked for, also not unasked mm-hmm. for, you know, but. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that that uh, way you lift each other up even more. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, because Mateus, I, I imagine if if another scholar says, "I really like that paper you wrote," or "I really agree with it," that's going to mean more than if I say. Because <laughs> I'm sure yeah. if I say, yeah, yeah but like, actually, yeah. there's some there's something that that neither of you know about the scholarly situation, right? And that is. Uh, the critique that you get. Mm. Oh, I bet, I bet it's is, brutal. But it is worth yeah. more than anybody saying, hey, good job on that. Yeah. And that is the whole process of going through, for instance, a PhD research. Um, you have to get broken down. Yeah. Yeah. Completely. Something. Yeah. Because if, if that doesn't happen, then you're not evolving, right? And that's the same... It's the same with if you submit an article uh, or a book uh, book uh, manuscript to, for peer review, right? Um, the peer reviewer, um, it, there, there are like three to four stages, right? Mm-hmm. There, there's like the one that never happens is, oh yeah, you just published this. That, that never happens. Uh, usually it's published with revisions or published with major revisions and then what happens once in a while is don't don't ever publish this because what you just wrote sucks. <laughs> uh, so it's yeah. like there's there's usually those two in in, in between um, mm. that you get back, and that is the most helpful stuff that you can get because obviously what what peer review does is that aside from you know telling you you need to make revisions, they also tell you what kinds of revisions, what is a problem with your written, and all that stuff, and. Uh, you know, a good scholar uh, looks at that revision, uh, that that those recommendations for revisions, and then implements most of them. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, getting to the other s- side of that, where you then have okay, so now we've published a book. Somebody told us to do a bunch of revisions. We've done that, and then we publish it. If you then go, go on the other side of that, mm. and somebody heavily criticizes what you've done Mm. then you have to ask yourself well how much in an echo chamber was i with my peer reviewers Mm -hmm. exactly yeah so Mm -hmm. so that's that's where you know scholarship at least should differ a lot from Mm -hmm. you know other arenas because uh what we're producing here is uh at least in principle knowledge about the world Mm-hmm. And that's different from, 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 for instance, the ex- experience of art, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, art, art is also a, a kind of knowledge about the world, but it is a, it is a subjective knowledge. Yeah. Um, and it, um, uh, it doesn't require, that's, that's the cool thing about it, really. It doesn't require that we are all in agreement about what it is mm-hmm. or what it's telling us about the world. But that's where a scholarship in, in all these different disciplines uh, and, and, and fields of research is different because we are supposed to be somewhat in agreement about that this actually represents a reality of some kind. But, um, but do you yeah. find the particular, like I think we've said, you know, we've said it many times on the podcast with Nordic mythology, like there is there's so much that we don't know or that can be purely subjective like it is and uh, up to a scholar's own personal interpretation obviously there are some set things but there is some that really can be debated from one scholar to the other hmm. um so how does yeah, but those the, the difference is here those aren't personal uh interpretations as much as they are uh gravitating towards uh different um fields of consensus like take okay. for instance the Snorri Sturluson's uh, creation myth, mm-hmm. right? 
Um, he talks a lot about fire and ice and, and all that funky stuff. Now, if you ask me as a scholar, I gravitate towards uh, the well-established consensus that Plato and other Mediterranean philosophy has influence on Snutter Sturluson's description of this. There are some others who, who would uh, gravitate more towards uh, what you could perhaps call nature mythological interpretations of it. And there is some of that too in there. Uh, the Snutter Sturluson, as I've argued in, in, in some of my scholarship, has like seems to have used ideas about uh, or stuff that he's actually seen in volcan volcanic eruptions, right? Mm -hmm. um, but but you can also take it in other directions and talk more phenomenologically about like, well, well, you know, ice and and cooling and melting and fire and all that stuff, right? The point is though that scholars they will land on different um, levels of critique and different areas of critique based off of what field uh, of research they gravitate towards, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So, yeah. so that, you know, that is again, at least in principle, based off of a existing consensus more than, oh, I just feel this instead of yeah. that, mm -hmm. right? Whereas in art, it's free and free of interpretation because it's completely random. But I've just last week works on a origin sound or like creation of the universe sound. And that was also coming back to, okay, what do we know? What do we see in sources worldwide, not just in the Nordic mythology, but, you know, mm -hmm. and you come still to these, and that is not peer reviewed, but you still come to these like core elemental sounds, you know, and, and elements, ice fire hissing you know and mm. motion and and of course it does all seem to point to some natural forces at play uh no matter which mythology jacket you put on on top of it so that's interesting but there we don't need Absolutely. that peer review we just follow the the <laughs> feeling <laughs> yeah. yeah but i mean i mean we spoke about earlier how hmm how much you help other people out. Do you ever find that if you give advice musically or critique, like Matthias was saying, it can never be taken negative? Um, I know that you gave, without going into any detail, you gave Josh some advice that he took very well and it improved something that he was creating. But do you ever get the opposite of that where it's kind of like people get a little defensive and has that ever happened to you maybe as well when you've been creating something and somebody's kind of coming in and giving you some advice? And because I imagine it can oh, be a very well, no, I've, I, think, I think it's been very welcome for me to receive a critique and advice, for example, from my one of my producers, Christopher Yule, who, who makes Cirque uh, Idol, for example. Mm -hmm. I mean, but it's it really depends on if it's asked or unasked advice, if the situation calls for it, or if you're, for example, both looking at the development of a track and really are both looking towards okay what's going to help this lift up and or where do you actually want to go what kind of feeling do you want to express and what do you want to reach the audience and then there's same with peer reviews i suppose from different areas of expertise you could look at a song based on music theory in general or um look at Nordic tracks uh, that we hear in the genre. If if um, someone who normally writes pop choruses looks at that, they will have a different critique based on their experience. They will say, "Oh yeah, it's really cool, but where is your chorus? Where's your hook? You know, <laughs> there's something missing here." Whereas mm -hmm. another person will say, "Yeah, but I really want to have the repetition to in order to change the state of mind uh, of the audience and for them to reach." Uh, state of trance with whatever binaural beats that is going on. So uh, to, for your question, it sort of really matters why you are discussing it and how it's being discussed. If it's an yeah. impromptu comment that nobody asks for, or if you're doing it to 
develop some project or some song and to really and I love I love talking with friends about stuff like that I do get sent demos by new groups and they will ask me do you like it <laughs> and uh, and then if yeah if they want feedback I will give it I will say yes or no, no, no. this is what yeah. I noticed but uh, but there's many ways to say it and mm -hmm. um yeah some some things need to be said very very truthfully directly like for example it would be really great if your instrument was tuned but other than that it's great <laughs> or uh <laughs> <no>. <laughs> i haven't oh. said that me but uh, you know with the soundtrack <laughs> that was one of the first things i thought <laughs> <laughs> But uh, oh, yeah, no, but but it's it's, it's like normal human decency. Mm. Where you it if you calls for it, you give it or not, or you hold it back. So do you ever get it from an outsider, like a a fan or a a no? Because I imagine that must happen where it's somebody that just thinks they know best and it's somebody not in the music they're just walking past and they go yeah i like to but do this because that feels like it happens in everything i don't yeah. know i have to go through my youtube comments yeah there's definitely <laughs> oh i'm sure there is a bunch there's on there. definitely i uh, probably 400 comments about my uh pronunciation in uh, surin which, <laughs> uh, which is a uh, which is a really interesting topic because now that I work with a Finnish guy, uh, we looked at that again, and there is definitely, there is this, this really old dialect in use where even the native Finn says, yeah, but okay, so the pronunciation, okay, could have been done better. But in general, what the, f what the hell is this dialect even? How do I, how do I do that? It's so old. Yeah. So it's, you know, everything's up for debate. Yes, there has been some comments. People do that as yeah. their favorite way to spend time online. YouTube comments are something else as well. There's something, I don't know what it is about YouTube comments compared to like Instagram or Facebook, or whatever, but YouTube comments just seem to bring out the fucking worst in people. And I don't know why. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Maybe it's a, a little bit of a different crowd hanging out there, or I don't know. I have no idea either. But Even more an anonymity, maybe? Yeah. It is it important. Tastes, no. That's yeah. definitely part of it, right? I, the anonymity. The I know you've yeah. you turned off your comments on you, Mateus, on your old... Oh, I... Well, actually, yeah, no, I... I shit, shit show. My, 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 my YouTube channel is sort of like dormant. Yeah. Uh, there's like a couple of videos that are still there, but you couldn't like, like I couldn't turn off comments as far as I could see. Maybe it didn't mm. look hard enough uh, because I'd uploaded them with comments. Oh, as, okay. As like a possibility. So, yeah. Yeah. so that's why I just like took like I've just like made all most of the videos. Um, uh, you can't see them. Uh, mm -hmm. They're still there, yeah. but. Um, and then like left a couple like the Heilung and Badrona interviews like that's really yeah. it. And it's really interesting to see that um, since I did that, uh, like I'm I'm out. Speaking of algorithm, I'm I'm out of the algorithm. Nobody oh, is, okay. uh, <laughs> is yeah. engaging with my <laughs> my YouTube mm. anymore. <laughs> it's it's kind of interesting. Yeah, it, it, it it's funny because we get it all the time. Mm. Um, well, sometimes we get it on. Facebook or Instagram or, or YouTube. And I'd be like, because it's particularly in this community, it just seems to be there's so many know it alls that have just read read a bunch of memes or read like some websites or mm. watched some TV shows. And then they'll just they, it might be the first time they've ever stumbled upon our podcast. And then I don't know, we'll be talking to fucking Terry Gunnell or Leche Gadelia or somebody like somebody really yeah, high established. Yeah. Yeah. And and obviously, Matthias is no fucking slob on his own. Yeah. So it's like, you know, you've got these high level scholars, and then you'll just get this little fucking dickhead in the comments, like, oh, well, actually, it's this. And it's just like, <laughs> it's like oh, this just, guy doesn't know what he's talking about. It just makes the fun of themselves. It's, oh, it does. Isn't it, uh, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, this I think these people more make a fool of 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 themselves, and uh, but it is still important. Like I, I had a friend who was a little upset this week because of uh, someone commenting on the way he played, and he actually had had a really bad day just before performing. Mm -hmm. um, so that that's a layer on top, you know. So you're already not feeling your best. You get this critique and. Uh, it really wears you down and uh, you maybe sometimes you start to question yourself and then mm. you know it's so dangerous actually mm. that people feel this freedom to just bash on someone that they yeah. don't even know because you and don't, they know, don't know the background through. you don't know yeah. what they're going through at that moment you don't know why someone is maybe not performing at how mm. they usually perform and i'm not saying that that was the case in this time but they're you know, there's always a whole life behind that person, mm -hmm. a whole situation. And we, yeah. oh my God, there we are again. We got to be kind. Yeah, it's really. true. Because I implore anybody who's listening to this, if you're ever thinking of leaving a shit comment on something, just think about like that person and who they might be, what they've gone through. Like, you don't know, like maybe, maybe their fucking mother passed away like a couple of days ago, or maybe their yeah. dog passed away or anything could happen that you don't know and they yeah. could just be having a really shitty day and they might act shittily but yeah. maybe they're just having a bad day so just you know everybody just has yeah. to give each other a little bit of a break sometimes yeah. I, I i agree with that approach but even more so i i want to just put it out there to yeah. to the uh um zuckerbergs and owners of of various um we're shitting on each other media uh platforms mm -hmm. maybe you guys who start doing something to your algorithms and mm -hmm. maybe redesigning your platforms in a way so that they don't spread shit yep so people actually <laughs> see what they follow as well yeah for instance oh. you know the people that they actually care about instead of you mm -hmm. know yeah. random ads you know yeah. all that stuff so. Yeah, and with with be kind. I don't mean blowing up smoke in people's whatever hole. Mm -hmm. Just like uh, I mean, it has to be genuine. Or oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I'm not saying that we should all have pink clouds around our heads. But I I mean, it's it's just yeah. If you don't have anything that helps a person, or they're asking for advice, or lift them up, then don't say anything. Maybe yeah, you don't have to go out of your you way to be. Yeah. Yeah. Nasty sometimes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, yeah, if there is if there is a reason for critique, you know it would help them. You can always say, Hey, I'm so uh passionate about I see how passionate you are about what you do. Can I uh is it okay if I, I give a suggestion? Mm -hmm. You know, that mm -hmm. would be a much nicer way to still mm -hmm. share your opinion. And then back them with music theory. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. The yeah. more the more the more I look at my camera on here, the more I'm getting worried about my own health. I'm sat here and I feel perfectly fine. But I'm looking at myself on there and I'm like, do I actually go need to see a doctor? You, you look You're kind actually of turning black now from the bottom. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Like the, the shade <laughs> of your beard is like going yeah, up. I'm, yeah. I'm just, I, I don't know what color that is. But it's not that's not the clue of a healthy human being. <laughs> No, this is um yeah, this is the the this is the pale that they uh, um that they talk about in old Norse that exactly that color right there. Yeah. 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 You, you don't know if it's if it's like uh like like white or black or blue. It's like yeah. somewhere in there be, in between all of these like shades. So there yes. you are. Um, it's something good. Cool. <laughs> People will be able to see it on YouTube. There is sure. such a different landscape there, yeah. Mm. I it's so it's so <laughs> insane compared to like this throw here is left like a deep green, like a really nice racing British racing green. Hmm. And the, everything is just off, and I don't know why, but I just look ill. But I promise anybody watching, I'm not. I'm all right. I'm doing well. <laughs> I have this idea. I hope you will do it in your new living place that you have this wooden wooden Viking throne that I set oh, up. You know? I do. When I when Plus I get lighting so... and audio, we should have to make it happen. Uh, mm -hmm. People, yeah, can make a throne for them. Please do. 
Oh yeah. I um I have some uh, some projects myself yeah. to execute at some point. Yes. Nice. Do do. Yeah, some one space for it. Hmm. Once I get settled, because obviously I'm, my house is going up for sale at the minute, um, where my my studio was. So I'm once I get settled somewhere else, then I'm gonna rebuild the studio 2.0 which is why I seem to be in different places every time we record this at the minute with a, but I'm not fucking using this camera again. <laughs> I'm going to go, I'm going to go pick up my proper camera from the house and use that because I, I can't have my reputation damaged by looking gray. <laughs> I know how you look uh, in real life. And then, uh, Thank you. I, hopefully we can get someone to touch good. it up and, and give me yeah. some color, some actual color to my skin and not just gray. gray. <laughs> um, <laughs> Katty, do you want to let people know where they can find your music, listen to your stuff, follow you? Uh, yeah. Um, so websites and stuff like that, it doesn't matter anymore for artists. Uh, you will help me a lot by checking out my Spotify. And maybe if you like one of the songs, add it to some playlist you, you play or something like that. Um, and that is just uh, Katty Khan. Mm-hmm. You'll find it there. And um, and then there's the YouTube. I hope to at some point make a music video again. <laughs> mm-hmm. Really love to do that. Yeah, but, uh, it's it's expensive to do so. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, there's also the YouTube. You can also listen to all the songs there and other streaming platforms, of course. But yeah, mm-hmm. Spotify will be great, and the Instagram for my sometimes posts. <laughs> when when it's called for when it's important yes yeah <laughs> when it's something nice yeah That's it. Mm-hmm. no i i ask everyone to go and listen to your music go and follow you support you because like i said you you're one of the kindest people in this community you've can't help us countless times you still do every time you know when when we were speaking to big guys like we ever mentioned anyone we wanted to interview you like oh i think i know a person who could talk to them or i could ask them it's you you never stop wanting to help people out and i think that's yeah like, yeah but you just, were also stuck with some situation and then well anyways <laughs> i know okay. i know but it's you know so mm-hmm. you you deserve the support back i feel that you give everybody else so yeah i think hopefully everyone can go and check out your stuff Listen to music because um, it's amazing as well. It's not like you know you've been around a long time. You 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 put out a lot of awesome music. So hopefully people mm-hmm. support. I have to. Yeah. Uh, oh, go on. Uh no no no. Uh, thank you. Uh you yeah. Let's let's <laughs> go and, and and please if actually I want to add this ENI project that I'm now working on. Mm-hmm. Because I I really believe in this and my gut is strong on this one and and I mm-hmm. really enjoy it and still enjoy recording for this new album of of theirs. So yeah, that's the not that's another one I really want to want to mention. E and I. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is that is there, is there anything of that out that people can listen to at the There's minute? There's already or? one album out that was released uh, just before this summer mm-hmm. called uh, Sunir. Uh, yeah, Sunir, Suna, Sunir, <laughs> and uh, and we're making like we're recording the next one as we speak, mm-hmm. like in the last weeks and the coming weeks. So, oh, we should we should get you back with a couple of the people from that to yeah. talk as a as a group, and we can talk all about it. That would be great. Yeah, cool. Yes, well, Katy, will you spell that for us for a second? Yes, um, it could be. Well, yeah. well, she just checked. I have to point out ah. one of my favorite comments. Um, from Andrew South, the also known as the Sea Wolf, who said, "I can't call a, I can't call a correct that mess." Meaning my video now. Andrew is a colorist for video, and did, <laughs> I did Sandman, the, the popular show on fucking Netflix, and he'd look at my camera like, "I can't fix that shit." <laughs> <laughs> so if he, if he can't do it, then we're fucked. <laughs> I love the Sandman, by the way. I hope they will continue. People have to oh. watch the show. There is, there's a, I think he, I saw him, I saw him quietly announce that there's a second series coming. So oh, great. So yeah. that's, that, that's good. Yeah. I, I think, I think I can say that. If not, Andrew, tell me now, take it back. 
yeah yeah no he just he said he said it's cool oh so good yeah let me know if they need music okay <laughs> <laughs> yes. like... oh get it andrew <laughs> andrew sorry out <laughs> yes yes well, all right yeah uh matthias where can people find you uh you can always find me on instagram just type in my name then you can go to the madness right there um mm -hmm. yeah and if anybody that follows Matthias, please follow me back now <laughs> yeah follow dan too so far behind yes. <laughs> um yeah obviously you can support me through the business of Honda Road, and I, I really appreciate that we've just put a massive clearance sale on for just making some space in the unit so go and check that out obviously you can follow me daniel underscore fire and one on instagram uh, i occasionally post i put pictures of the puppy up that's going to be my new thing um yeah if you like the podcast please leave us a five star rain positive review wherever you listen to podcasts it really helps uh the youtube channel we're growing i know we've got some more interviews from midgas plot to be going on there we've got Heine Selvig, uh lindy fair mm. um tim nankaro we've got a couple of things so we've got a bunch of short interviews from midgas but we're going to be putting on the the youtube channel which is really popular it's fine um, as well right Katrina, yes, Steinbeck yes. from Calandra. Nice. And, and don't forget to share them. Share them, share them, share them with all yeah, your that's... friends and family, everybody you know. That's a good point because, you know, not everybody can support on Patreon. Not everybody can, you know, help financially. They, but just sharing the video helps somebody else find it. It really does help us keep growing and keep, yeah, keep me and Mateus doing what we really enjoy doing, which is just sitting down and talking to awesome people like Katya. And yeah, we, it's, it's a lot of fun. We really like doing it. So any way you can help is appreciated. And I know we're going to start putting, uh, we're, we're revamping the, the Patreon. We're, we're kind of restructuring everything at the minute. We brought Bob on to help us book. So we're now booked up till the end of October, I think. Nice. I, yes. Um, Silent Bob. Silent Bob. Yeah. So yes, yeah, so we've got he people does. booked. We're um, booked with some really cool. Bob's going to come back on after you called him out for being a skeptic, which mm. should be a which should be a fun episode. Um, <laughs> yeah, defending no, himself. He says he's got the it factor. I I wanna I wanna hear. It. <laughs> yeah, are you gonna so, do more story times stuff? Like hopefully, that? yeah. We, that, oh. That's it. We, obviously, we've had we've had a very turbulent few months between. He met Tess, obviously him having his son and me having everything that's gone on with me. Yes. You know, we've had a, a very kind of up and down couple of months, but it feels like now things have settled out. Ron's come on board and he's has now taken over from, from Shan, who did an amazing job before to edit everything. Um, it's really, I mean, I can I don't think I've ever seen a worker as good as Ron. And I have to give him his dues. Um, and yeah. I'm sure it's, you agree. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> we had, everything is just like working out over there. Mm -hmm. Like, and I yeah. see like uh, in in like some of our our messages, uh, message threads, and uh, that kind of stuff. I see like you guys like do, 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 million messages, and then I'm like, oh, yeah, it it worked out on its own. Yeah, but <laughs> I, I, I yeah. like because <laughs> I'm so like, aloof, you know. <laughs> I feel like like Ron is genuinely like the missing piece to the puzzle that we've we've had. Like because because we we're so busy in what we do, you know. I'm busy with with Hans Road, and you're busy teaching, writing books, everything that you do. And then we come together to do the podcast, so we don't have much time to to do the promoting and all that stuff. Whereas Ron is he's on top of it. He, yeah, he's a he's a hard ass, and that's kind of what we need. We need someone who comes in and says, "Do this, and yeah. do that. I need this. I want this," and and that's kind of what's happening now, and that's what we great we, yeah. we've been missing. So um, yeah, big big things to come. I know Mateo, you're going to start doing some educational stuff for the Patreon, mm -hmm. and we're really kicking on from here, getting back to our usual weekly schedule with some amazing guests, and it's fun to be back. Yeah. Here we yes. <laughs> yeah. Thank, yeah. thank you very nice much. Nice one. Mm. Awesome. Yes. Must be great. <laughs> Katie, yeah, thank you thank for joining you. us. Thank you yeah. very much for joining us. I had a great time. Thank you, guys.